Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. No, it's not unboxing day, that's for another episode. We're gonna try something new today. This is Day in the Life of a Guitar Trader. So this is a brand new guitar that I traded because somebody had this beautiful Les Paul Custom and they wanted this brand new guitar. So in order to keep up with all this stuff, because I just have so many new guitars to document, I thought we would combine these together. It's kind of like an unboxing day, kind of mixed with a review and demo. <laughs> it's just a bunch of stuff and you guys gotta let me know if you like this because I've been kind of thinking of swapping up my content a little bit because it seems people prefer the unboxing videos more so than the full reviews and demos. Like we're talking twice the views on unboxing. So maybe I can make everybody happy here by just unboxing one guitar per episode and just putting like a short review and demo together. Because that's the other thing. If you guys are wondering why I've been missing uploads occasionally, I just run out of time. Now that I do all the B-roll stuff, it's just a lot of time that I don't have to put in every day. And when I mean a lot of time, it's like at least 12 hours. And if I don't get started until noon, that doesn't help us get reviews out at a decent time that YouTube rewards. So inside here, being traded for that Les Paul Custom is a model we actually have already reviewed, but it's a different color. And I thought it'd be an absolute shame not to document this one at the same time in some way. Let's go ahead and uh, get this Gibson case out of here. All right, here we go. One, two, three, and four. Fifth backlatch inside this case. Oh, nice. I hate to say it, despite Anaconda Burst being a reissue of something that they just did a few years ago, I think I like this finish better than the Vermilion after all that. So the guy that traded for this, he was wondering, is the dark edge on this actually just a dark green, kind of like the Vermilion Burst? And I've got to say, yes, it is. It's just kind of like a swamp green, get out of my swamp type vibe. <laughs> I'm more of a green guy than a red guy. I mean, you can tell that by my new t-shirt here that's also green. You can order those at Teespring. There's usually a little thing right under the video if you're interested in it. Let's do a quick look over here. As far as quality control goes, that's looking pretty good. Uh, fret nibs on that last one was a little bit questionable. Um, they're looking good here. I don't see any excessive tooling marks on first impressions. Looks like you get a little bit of bleed from the finish onto the binding. That's not bad. But check out the sweet chevron top. We were just talking about those yesterday. I think this one is technically reverse chevron. It's confusing because it's the opposite of the chevron logo. But nice, nice, nice. Do you guys see this? It's like a, a red back here. That's looking really good. I would have to say I prefer this one over the Vermilion Burst. Looks like we got all the good stuff in here as well. Next up on our agenda here, the person who's purchased the Les Paul Custom that was traded for this is asking that I restore the original pickups in it. Now what's kind of unique about the situation is the non-original pickups in here used a push-pull pot. So I'm actually going to be able to reuse those with the original pickups since they are the Bill Lawrence the Originals. Because those naturally came with a four conductor wiring despite Gibson only using two of them. So that's kind of a nice little added bonus that he'll have coil split abilities here as well. So here we go! We are are cleaning this guy up. It's a little bit grungy over the years. It hasn't been used too much, said the guy that traded it in for the slash. So we definitely need some tender loving care on this guy. But we swapped out the pickups here. That kind of went without a hitch. I've never wired a push-pull pop before, but everything seemed to work out just fine. The only thing that I had to go back and later redo is I did not get the grounding wire connected on the bridge pickup and that caused a hum, but I got that all secured. It only took me one and a half tries, so I'm pretty proud of that. The only thing left to do is polish this body up, polish up the frets, clean that fretboard off and condition it, and polish up the rest of this guitar. I think this thing is looking pretty good. Now let's go ahead and switch over to the Slash. Being a brand new guitar, this thing didn't need much. I just wanted to condition the fretboard so it would look awesome again and make sure those frets were nice and polished. And hey, while we're at it, we might as well take a quality check. 
So it's still the rhythm slash bucker in the neck and the lead slash bucker in the bridge, but you're gonna notice these pickup cavities have no finish in them. Whereas the other one was completely covered in that reddish color and had markings of like a slash Les Paul standard and the color that it was supposed to be. So that's interesting. And they did a much better job with the screw holes on this one, but everything else is pretty much the same as that last one. You have the same Gibson ABR1 bridge that's mounted on the Nashville style studs, lightweight advanced plating tailpiece. And just in case you're curious, this is what it would look like with the included pick guard. I think what makes this look bad is it's only single ply. I think if it had like a single outer layer that was cream, I think it would jive a lot better. But geez, do not cover this top. That is such an explosive top. The plastics do look rough in this area on this one as well. But super flamey two-piece maple top on a mahogany body that's solid. You get a rosewood fretboard here. I would say they actually did a little bit of a better job on this one than even the last one. I mean, the tooling marks are very minor. I mean, it's nothing, absolutely nothing that I would complain about. And they did a better job on the fret nibs. Face of the headstock's about the same on those guys too. Let's go ahead and grab neck dimensions. Nut width 1.68, 12th 2.08, first fret neck depth 0.92. And by the 12th, 0.98, I think that's just slightly beefier than the last one. And just for fun here, the readings 8.44 in the bridge, 8.15 in the neck, and within the middle, 4.15. Moving on to the back side here. Once again, everything's looking nice and tidy within this control cavity. Orange drop caps with the Gibson branded pots, but look what we have up here again. That has to be some sort of CNC machine error because once again, we have six holes instead of three. If anyone else purchased one of these slash standards lately, I'd be interested to hear if your guys' also has six holes in it because that's the second one I've opened. But mahogany body, mahogany neck. I like the look of the rock and roll skull here on this like dark back finish going on and this was made the 48th day of the year 2020. This example weighs 9 pounds 11.8 ounces so a little bit heavier than the last one but let's go ahead and get some tone samples out of these guys while we're at it. <laughs> thing to do now is pack these guitars up. So I purchased the brand new Slash Les Paul to be traded for that Les Paul Custom, and then the Les Paul Custom was sold. So what are my final opinions of these guitars? The Custom itself was from 1989. That's kind of the beginning of the Henry J era, which just recently ended, and it kind of ushers in that whole Goodwood thing. The Custom Pluses from this era are just fantastic looking. I mean, if you think this top is great, I would say it's definitely within the top tier of the nice tops of this era, but you can find a lot of really cool looking Les Paul Customs. So if you want a custom with a flame top, look to the late 80s and early 90s because those are some of my favorites. As far as the second slash goes, I preferred the colors on it and I thought it played just a little bit better as well. The neck had a little bit more of a rounded feel to it. it was was just more what I expected on a 50s Les Paul standard. 
Both of the Slash standards that I had were very nice guitars though. I do highly suggest them if you're looking for a more modern kind of slashy tone on a Les Paul that has very traditional specs. So thank you Troglodytes for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed this kind of review demo unboxing conglomeration here and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. And let me tell you, it's going to be a good one. Oh, and one more thing we need to do, we need to pick some winners here. So this is going to be the winner of those patches that I was sent. This was a USA only giveaway, so let's go ahead and see how many comments were done. A lot of people didn't read the description on that one, so there's only 120 entries into this. Our lucky winner of some patches is... Isaac Wooten! Hey, I know that guy. He comments quite a bit. He's been watching my channel for a long time because I sold him that guitar right there. 2014 Classic Custom, one of the ones that has the flower pot inlays on it. That's a cool guitar. And the last drawing we have today is for the Groove Gear. This one was open worldwide, but you had to share the video. Let's see how many entries we had this time. That's gonna be a lot of comments. Wow, 1,140. And our big winner is Jordan. Happy birthday, Trogley.